Ole Udo has been cursed out by Vikings fans for a, a, a couple of seasons, right? 2021, when they put him at right guard, did not move him, and he just wasn't good uh, on the inside. But the Vikings in 2021 were too stubborn, sort of is what it is, and Ole Udo was slated to be a free agent after the expiration of his rookie deal, but he's back. Guess who's back? Back again. Ole's back. Tell a friend. Vikings announced that they have agreed to terms with Ole Udo. And Darren Doogie Wolfson, KSTP, chimed in. That's a one-year deal for uh, $2.58 million. Uh, Now, there's a lot of things here. Number one, have to check the guarantees. Now, is it like a Jordan Hicks deal where the entire base salary is guaranteed? Or is it like one of the other veteran deals where there's very little in terms of guarantee, doesn't even guarantee them a 53-man rooster spot uh, ostensibly? Uh, so we'll, we'll see. Like, if it's a fully guaranteed deal, mm. Uh, if, if it's got a small signing bonus and maybe it doesn't even uh, guarantee him a spot on the 53, leaves things very much open for competition uh, and a- adding some other players in the free agency or the draft, I'm all for that. Uh, but either way, I mean, $2.58 million for a former starter, even though, yes, it wasn't great when he started. But uh, a guy that does have positional flexibility and would be a high-end backup wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, uh, especially since you're not paying Darius a premium contract as of yet. And uh, it, it subscribes to Quasi's Moneyball theory, right? So you're getting a guy on a value contract, young, physical, and you just sort of go from there. But I still have some hope for Ole Udo. Maybe not as a regular starter. Well, certainly not as a regular starter. But could he become a... A Rashad Hill type guy where you have him on your roster as your sixth or seventh offensive lineman. You feel fine if he has to spot start for a game or two if there's injuries, but you don't necessarily want him as a regular starter. Could be, uh, but he's 26 years young, six foot five, 323, the pride of Alana University. Uh, go Phoenix. Uh, he was a 2019 six round pick. Uh, spent two years as a backup, and then 2021 he emerged as a starter at right guard and also spot started two games at left tackle. It wasn't good. Well, it wasn't great. Uh, 45 pressures, and also he had 16 penalties, consistently killing drives with, with holds and and whatnot. And it just wasn't good. And we've we've explained our theory where Oli Udo was a tackle, 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 specifically right tackle only uh, at Elon University. So now they got him kicked inside. I actually think that his arms are too long uh, for the interior. So, you know, players were able, if, if they're able to get by his hands, they're able to get into his chest, whereas as a center and a guard, sometimes you benefit from having shorter arms. I know that a big deal is made about tackle arm length, but that's tackle. On the inside, uh, you know, when you're playing it close to the best, uh, maybe Ole Udo didn't have the hands for it, and it, it uh, resulted in a number of those penalties. Hence, you know, he's always grabbing around uh, the outside of the defensive lineman. So, again, that, that's just like a, a crackpot back of the envelope theory, but uh, whatever. Either way, it didn't work out with him at guard. Uh, but last year, uh, after uh, Brian O'Neill fortunately went down with his torn Achilles, knocking on all the wood, his recovery is going to be good to go. Uh, but in weeks 17, remember, uh, uh, O'Neill injured himself week 17 against the Packers. The start uh, week 18 against the Bears and then the wild card game, 173 snaps, a 73.2 PFF grade, which is fourth amongst NFL right tackles, only three pressures. Trace, uh, zero sacks and only one penalty, uh, and had an 81.0 PFF pass blocking grade, which is also fourth in the league amongst right tackles. So it's pretty damn good. And like I said, he's playing his natural position of right tackle. And of course, you know, there, there's not going to be any future for him at right tackle because, yeah, Brian O'Neill in that spot. But as a guy that could back up specifically Brian O'Neill, that, that ain't bad. That, that ain't bad. And even though the Vikings' offensive line. I, I mean, on paper, it should be good to go. You have uh, the best uh, tackle duo in the league in Darisaw and O'Neal, uh, but the the Vikings have problems, especially on the interior last year, in terms of keeping Kirk Cousins upright. He had a career high in pressures, a career high in sacks, as well as Dalvin Cook had a career low in yards per carry. So, I mean, the offensive line last year it was sort of whatever, but injuries were a big part of the uh, as Darisaw missed time with concussions, O'Neal missed time with the Achilles, uh, Garrett Bradbury missed time with a back issue. So, Whatever, but it's interesting that they're basically running it back with the same crew uh, because uh, Blake Brandle was brought back as ERFA. I like him as Darius's primary left tackle backup. They re-signed Schlutman. They redid Chris Reed's deal, and now they're re-signing Ole Udo. So obviously, you know Chris Cooper and Kevin O'Connell and company believe uh, in this offensive line group and hope that they can get better. But also, <clears throat> just because. You know, they bring back guys like Brandel, Schlutman, Reed, and Udo. It doesn't mean that they should not be looking at offensive line, especially interior offensive line in the draft. Uh, that's something to keep in mind. But 
Uh, that that's it. Uh, I I understand fans are sort of tepid, just like blah blah blah. But they're not bringing back Ole Udo to be a starter. That's very important. They're bringing him back to be a primary backup, and I'm fine with that at this point, especially the way that he played uh, in spot start duty last year for Brian O'Neill. But your thoughts are thoughts. Vikings resign Ole Udo. Let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Once put the work, put a little something in the Venmo. But to next time, Skull Production Value.